I think the first is to understand that we now live in an extremely fractured world, that the public information ecosystem, our shared reality, has been torn apart. And that's because of a lot of reasons, but largely it's the distribution system, what used to be traditional media no longer distributes, and big tech's way of making money actually works on personalizing, meaning taking you away from the shared space. So that's the first step. Understand the context that we're living in today. I think the second one is that much as you want to distrust, right? It's, it's healthy to be skeptical about what you're seeing, but it's incredibly destructive to be cynical because we live in a world where it becomes even more important to create communities of action. And the only way you're going to do that is face to face, is eyeball to eyeball. In Africa, you, Ubuntu is what I learned, right? Like, so, so we go back to the core of who we are as people, the core of our humanity and the, and the societies that we build around it. Uh, democracy has been the most successful so far. Call it what it is. Be spot on. Be aware that one death is one death too much. Um, in a post-fact world, I, I really hate that idea. But first, let's, let's focus on the facts, right? Our shared reality is based on the facts we agree to. And frankly, it shouldn't be that we agree to this. We see it, we live it, we know it. We are here in this space. You are not in London. And yet, in our information ecosystem today, if if I do information operations to pound a million times that you're in London, people may believe you're in London. And you know, there's there's psychological studies that show this all the way back to the 60s. I think the key part here is go back to the shared reality, the shared space, know the facts. After the facts, understand the context, understand the nuances that have been drained out of that shared space that we live in today. Gaza is a perfect example of a hundred year history, right? That is hard to put together in, in minutes. Um, and the trigger for what we're seeing for this war that is happening right now is Hamas attacking Israel. That's wrong the same way that 30,000 people killed is wrong. And what is at stake in the world today is this idea of every individual having their rights covered in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Do we watch in silence? In 2011, when I was starting to put Rappler together, you have to have an elevator pitch if you're a, if you're an entrepreneur. So the elevator pitch, you get somebody in the elevator with you, right? The elevator pitch for Rappler is we build communities of action and journalism is the food we feed our communities. That's how we connect. Journalists don't just report because we like reporting, right? Journalists report the facts, the food that you need, that you as a citizen of a democracy that civil society needs in order to create a better world. Civil society, NGOs, they will act in ways journalists can't. But in order to do what they're going to do, they need to have the facts. That will come from journalism. It's, it's a whole of society, a theory of change, I think. 
and a whole of society approach to that. So this is, you know, let me walk into uh, systems of governance and and democracy. Uh, how how journalists fit into that? The Philippines has a, co a constitution patterned after the United States. It has Bill of Rights. Um, journalists are protected in ways that actually reflect the power that we derive from the people. The strange thing right now is that again, the distribution system has taken those protections away. And we are living at a time where you have seen more journalists globally harassed, jailed, killed. And that is a trend that has happened for the last decade. Not coincidentally, that trend goes hand in hand with the decline of democracy around the world. If you do not have the facts, you're not going to know how to make things better. If you don't have journalists, you're not going to be able to hold power to account. I think one of the most wonderful things about this visit to Johannesburg is listening to, to reading the letter that Nelson Mandela, it's a draft of a book that he, he was starting to write while he was president. And he was writing about, uh, he was writing it in third person, but about how someone who has power can be corrupted by that power. Um, and it was interesting how he, it was a distancing effect, but you can almost feel the man grappling with that uh, himself. And I think that's what we have. No matter how good a person you are, it comes for you. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Journalists help make sure that the guardrails are in place, that the public can see. And I always say, you know, you shine the light. When the light is there, people behave in much more civilized ways. I've long said 2024 is the tipping point for democracy. We're looking at jumping off the cliff this year. And part of the trigger is not just the real world problems of every country, of every democratic country around the world, South Africa, very real problems of unemployment, of power outages. I like the euphemisms that every country who faces this goes through. In the Philippines, when we had 10 hour long power failures, we, we refused to call it blackouts. So we were euphemistic, we called it brownouts, and they rotate it. We live through it. But these are real problems that every, that, that every emerging democracy faces. So, so how do we deal with this? Um, in the old days, before tech, we would have been able to pull people together. There would be public debate, and hopefully a solution would be found. We've, we certainly went through this in the Philippines. Today, with big tech, being the connective tissue at the cellular level of a democracy, going directly to the people, right? So understand that as a government, it becomes more difficult to govern because there are many more forces that are insidiously manipulating people. And we've seen this geopolitical power doing that. So at this age, it becomes even more important to create the shared space I think the key thing to remember for this moment in time as democracy faces this abyss, right, that we might just fall off the cliff, is that how it survives is not going to be up to someone else out there. It's going to be up to you. It's going to be what you're going to do, how you're going to mobilize your family and friends, your communities of action. <laughs>